Hello, and welcome to the official launch of Virtual Video Control Room, a must-have broadcast cloud production tool chest for today's live streaming producer. My name is Corey Benke, co-founder here at LiveX, coming to you live from our studio here in Hudson Yards, Manhattan. In a moment, I'm gonna walk you through VVCR and all its features, but first, take a look at our new launch video. Welcome to your all-in-one cloud-based live production hub. Produce your live broadcast remotely by accessing your production tools in the cloud. Monitor your show live like you're right on set. Stream, monitor, switch, and trim your live video all within one platform. Virtual Video Control Room is browser-based, making accessing your streams simple and secure. View all of your cameras using the grid and display up to 10 simultaneous feeds. Allow producer teams a secure and synchronous way to view the production remotely, all while streaming live to any platform. And when you're all wrapped, trim your program and download the finished product in your browser. Simplify live video production with Virtual Video Control Room, your live video production hub in the cloud. All right, so before we get started with the demo of Basic and Enterprise, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history of Virtual Video Control Room in the last year and some of the major events that it's actually been worked on and the events that relied on Virtual Video Control Room. So back in 2018 of August, we produced a remote multi-camera coverage for the 118th US Amateur Championships in Pebble Beach, California for the United States Golf Association. So you can see these, we sent these six feeds point to point from from Pebble Beach to our master control room in New York City, utilizing SRT and high vision stream sync technology. And it worked really well. Uh, we were able to you know, have a cost effective solution for our client that was no one could tell the difference. And some of you in broadcast, you know, you, you get the whole Remy thing way before uh, everything that's happened to us in the last year and some of the cost savings and, and, and lifestyle savings that you can have using a remote workflow. So in 2019, we became a member of the SRT Alliance and began development of Rivet, our remote contribution software for Mac, iOS, Android, and Windows. And that was going so well that in late 2019, um, we were chosen to be the streaming architect for the 2020 Democratic National Convention. So as remote work became more essential, we added to our remote master control rooms. We had one remote master control room. We went from one to four. And we looked out there at many of the cloud-based monitoring and processing tools, specifically regarding SRT in the marketplace. We decided to build our own virtual video control room and launch it internally for the Democratic National Convention. So fast forward August 2020, uh, everything's changing. Uh, the principal has to go to different locations and that's where virtual video control, by making that decision, it really impacted um, uh, our flexibility and our redundancy and our ability to move quickly and really proved itself right out of the gate. So the core features and grids were launched internally um, and all of the broadcast, including the, the highest level broadcasters, uh, streaming and playback teams. So Delaware playback teams were utilizing virtual video control room for remote monitoring. So we had talent in different locations, um, so they were they would have uh, remote kits and those were all going into virtual video control room So lighting directors and uh, costume designers could basically see what was going on with the principles with high-level principles um, And so fast forward to December that worked really well fast forward to December And I've been the producer of the official New Year's Eve and Times Square webcast for over 12 years now been part of the show for about 18 years and uh it was the first time in New, Year, New Year's Eve history that we had a closed set. So we weren't able to bring as many people to the square, including crew, by the way. So in order to facilitate the fact that we needed less crew on the ground, we actually used virtual video control room. We sent over 20 feeds up to virtual video control room, decoded them with high vision Makito X decoders, made the show, put them back onto VVCR, and actually sent destinations, utilizing our destinations feature to 
Twitch and YouTube. Um, so it was very successful, very high level. Uh, and then in January 2021, so, so one month later, uh, the presidential inauguration and all the official events around the inauguration, we sent feeds from all over DC. And the really cool part about what we did here is we were able to make multiple shows. So audio, audio uh, American Sign Language interpreters could be on Zoom. We could send the program into VVCR. We could cut the show, push it out on destination. But also, we made this really cool kids show where we had Kiki Palmer and Doris Kearns Goodwin, among many other guests. And we were able to send the transmission into VVCR, cut the show, then send it back out to all places. And actually, for that show, the director of the show was in DC. So we were sending a feed to New York, cutting it, but listening to a director in DC and making the show. So multiple destinations were utilized uh, via all of the streaming platforms for uh, VVCR and the presidential inauguration. So VVCR has been used on some pretty high level events. It's been tested in through the paces. We're not, we decided to launch the product um, now because it's been so valuable for us. And, and we wanted to, you know, get it to a place where people could really use it and see the benefits of using it. So next, let's get to the demo. All right, so let's get to why you're all here. Uh, demo, actual demo of the product. I've got a new basic account that I've created. Um, the basic features are clusters, streams, destinations, and grids. We've created some clusters for you, um, and which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but let's get right to it. Uh, I, I have right here a new account created. And um, I talked about New Year's Eve earlier. I've actually added, you'll see here I have five streams. And just to kind of get ahead of ourselves, this is a grid view of virtual video control room of my five feeds. And you'll see right here, I have not configured this feed right here. This is my helicopter uh, stream. But you can see I have my virtual video control room playing in my grids view. So I'm gonna uh, close that, come back here to my stream so that I can add that helicopter feed um, and so it's fairly simple to do I've got my streams here and my team is back there here I'm gonna add a new stream I've got my New Year's Eve helicopter and one of the things I talked about how we have clusters so if you have an enterprise account you can actually turn on any cluster in any AWS region but for basic what we've done is we've added we have five regions so we have Oregon Hong Kong China Ohio Frankfurt and for our friends near Los Angeles the Northern California region of AWS um, so in this instance I'm gonna actually pick Ohio because that's closest to me I'm not gonna add a Y cluster so what's cool is you can actually add a backup cluster um, so if you want to stream to a different region so those of you that know AWS know that actually this would take like eight or nine steps to do the backup piece but uh, VVCR it actually can be done for you here I'm not gonna have a backup stream in this instance I can also do SRT listener or RTMP RTMP poll so for those of you that don't have SRT if you don't have SRT please get rivet our, our software for SRT contribution but if you don't have an SRT encoder uh, you can always use RTMP there's plenty of those on the market um, but in this case, I'm gonna use SRT because I'm actually sending from a Makito. And so, like I said, earlier uh, in the history of EVCR, we actually sent 20 feeds uh, from Makito X's up to the cloud, up to virtual video control room, and then decoded them in our master control room here in New York. Uh, it was the first time in 18 years that we did a Remy workflow, a true Remy workflow for New Year's Eve um, uh, using this product. So I've got my SRT listener here, and I'm not gonna use any encryption. If you have something, uh, one of the great aspects of SRT is that you can use encryption. And I'm gonna set my latency for 200, I'm keep it at 200 because I'm good with that uh, and of course I have my encoder redundancy set here at single so I'm gonna push save there and I mentioned my team in the background so what I'm not showing you is this will create a new stream and right here there's a public IP with a port my team right now is taking that IP and putting it into the Makito X encoder that's playing the helicopter content, right? So you would basically copy this put it into any SRT encoder that you have in uh, 
uh, or in, in the case you would have your RTMP settings and there you would actually put that into your encoder and then you'll see that every stream actually creates, a, it replicates the stream and automatically creates pull outputs. So here I have pull outputs for HLS, RTMP with the stream key, SRT and What's really helpful about this, there's many, many things. One is replicating every stream allows us to then utilize it in enterprise to record it, to do other things with that stream. Um, set a push destination, which I'm gonna go over in a second. But also one of the things I like to use it for is I like to check my feeds in VLC or quick or QuickTime. So I'll 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 let's say I'm sending captions right to uh, in program closed captions. So Virtual Video Control Room actually holds captions, keeps them in the stream, and so I can actually use the pull output for HLS and I can put this pull output into QuickTime or VLC or or whatever your player of choice, and then I can turn on and off closed captions to check them. That's that's one thing I use this for. But there's a myriad of things that this. Can can work for. So now I'm going to open the preview and you'll see, oh great, I've got my helicopter feed, I got fireworks going off in Times Square, exactly what I'm expecting from this feed and every stream will have a preview button down on the right. Uh, there's a better way to view them as you saw in grids and uh, we'll go over that in a second. But now I have my six streams right here. Uh, I'm just going to go and check I like to check to make sure they're all working. And so the way you're, this player that you're looking at is actually an SLDP player. Uh, it's ultra low latency playback. So it allows you to um, view your streams in full quality, by the way. Uh, there's no transcoding that happens. So the next thing I'm gonna do is talk about destinations. So I've got my streams in there. What do I want to do with them? All right, so I, what I did is I created this uh, live, I created this YouTube test account called Test Stream VVCR, and um, it's private, uh, no one can view it. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a destination and send that helicopter feed to YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and add destination. So I'm gonna call VVCR YT test, because that's what it is. And I'm gonna take my input name, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose my NYE helicopter feed, which is coming from Ohio. And I'm gonna, instead of SRT, caller I'm going to do RTMP push and you'll see once I do RTMP push it actually changes the RTMP push settings here so I'm going to take my RTMP settings in YouTube I'm going to go ahead and copy the stream URL and I'm going to copy this default key go ahead and paste that in there and push save and you'll see destination successfully created. So I've got that set. Uh, obviously I'm stalling for time right now because the connection in YouTube, it does take, well, as most of you who use YouTube know, it does take some time to get the connection going uh, and to be able to preview your feed in YouTube. So I'm gonna go back to my VVCR. You see, I've still got my YouTube destination here. Um, I've got my RTMP push, so let's check YouTube. And oh, there we see our beautiful uh, helicopter shot preview, excellent condition, um, excellent connection condition. Uh, and so there we go. We've got YouTube going and we have tested this fully out to Twitch. So anything that can take an RT, uh, H.264 uh, RTMP right now uh, or SRT push uh, can be utilized in destinations. And also destinations later on in enterprise is how we do NDI and vMix in the cloud. Cloud. So obviously you want to stick around for that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over here. The sexiest feature of Virtual Video Control Room, where it all comes together, uh, is really grids. And so I'm going to click here and you'll see I originally started this program with a grid that was a, a three by two of my feeds. And I wanna just show you how easy it is to set these up. So I'm gonna do a new one. This is gonna be called VVCR Test 2. Uh, I can give it a short name here, I'm not going to. And you'll see right here, I can actually change if I want a one by three. So I, I, say, this, I say this because what's really cool about this, I was doing, um, uh, our, our Packer show, uh, which was a draft live show remotely. And I actually had a vertical monitor with the three feeds. I had uh, NFL Network, SRT to me. I had uh, the program feed and the multi-viewer from New York uh, because I was in Green Bay and I was actually talent on Zoom, but I was watching in virtual video control room. And so the ability to be able to do vertical or horizontal layouts is extremely helpful. A lot of times for like the DNC, we'd do a one by two. 
So here, I like a one by two, I can do a one by two or a two by one. So if I want it to be more horizontal, right, so, uh, so I can have them side by side. So in this case, we were doing a uh, uh, Democratic National Convention and you'd have talent that were on live views that were actually sent via SRT to virtual video control room. And so lighting designers and costume designers could see in full quality side by side the, the talent. Um, so I'm gonna actually do for you guys a three by two because I do have uh, six feeds. And so you'll see how easy it is. I've got these labeled NYE one, two. I can actually do backup streams as well. So you can make sure your backup streams are going. So I'm just gonna go through here and go NYE one through five and helicopter, which of course I did not label um, six. Um, so I've got player is SLDP. Talked about that, that's an ultra low latency player. I can make the visibility private, so only logged in users. I can make it completely public, or I can actually click here and add a password and add a, a, a password to this. I'm gonna right now make this private for myself. And the other thing that I need to note is I can actually remove uh, the stream name, the stream address, the bit rate, the uh, view, view meters. I'm gonna show you view, view meters in a second. We added it as a feature because it does require GPU. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make all of this available. I've got my feeds right here, and then I'm gonna push save. That's gonna save, and you'll see I've got my VVCR test, and I've got my VVCR test two. So I'm gonna go ahead here, so I can, I can copy this and send it to people, so if it was password protected, I can, I can copy, send it, um, send the password, good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. So things to note about this, it does take a second to populate everything. When you'll see here, 4,000 kilobits per second, 4,000, 42, 43, 42, 43, I'm actually viewing these feeds in full quality uh, uh, as they came to me. So over here, I can actually, I can choose a feed to, to play just that feed's audio. Um, I can choose that feed to see what that audio is like. So it's pretty cool monitoring tool that way. You'll see over here, I've got enable VU. So VU does take uh, 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 GPU from the computer that you're on, right? And I'm gonna turn that on in a second. But one thing to note is it's a little bit of math. You don't have to do, but it's something to think about. You need to have the download bandwidth for the grid view you want. So what you do is you add up the actual uh, uh, download. So you can see here, I've got upload of 42, four, so if I go 4,000 kilobits per second times six, I'm about 24 megs that I have to download in order to view. So right Right now, I'm actually, you need to have pretty good internet if you're because we do not actually transcode the feeds for you to grid, for you to view them. And for us and for production, it's great because you see the feed in true quality as it comes to you. Um, however, for people that don't have good internet, what we tend to do is we give them exactly what they need. We'll make them a grid like a one by one or, or a one by two and just give them what they need. And remember, you can make as many grids as you want realize the output of the grids does cost you on your viewing hours. So, so uh, the basic account comes with 100 gigabytes of viewing data. And so you'll, you'll need to remember that, that that is how, um, that is how we are actually gauging how much data that you use. Um, so I wanna go back here and just enable the view meters to show you uh, a lot of you that, that you know, um, uh, uh, do audio will very much appreciate this, especially like if I can just view. So you'll see it basically reset all the streams. And now you'll see I have nice true VU meters running um, to all the accounts. And so I don't have to actually um, click on the audio to see if there's audio on that account or see if it's on one or two. I can actually see what the view meters are, are uh, where the audio is coming at me and where it's showing. And again, like some cool features of making, you know, certain feeds full screen I, I can remove these overlays here so I can if, if we don't want talent to see what you name the stream or you don't want the the actual SRT input I will say for for people when you're doing lots of feeds it's very helpful to know which IP addresses are doing which things for monitoring and processing so that's why we added the overlays to this feature but again grids is where it's at really why we do this it's the monitoring piece in grids um, you know, being able to isolate the stream audio, having the password protection, everything turns on with grids. Um, it's a really, really, really cool feature. And honestly, um, you know, uh, the thing that really makes virtual video control room a, a powerful piece of software. All right, so that is basic uh, clusters, 
We have five regions, streams, uh, destinations, and grids. And the basic plan is $99 a month. Uh, like I said, that does come with 100 gigs. The free trial lasts for seven days. So we will give you seven days, 25 gigs for free for that seven days. So you can try everything out. Um, we've had many people, the thing about VVCR that's actually surprised me the most, I've developed uh, some significant products in the live streaming space. I've never had the kind of adoption from staff that we've had on this. And that's half the reason we came up with Basic is that our staff was telling me, telling me hey, I love this product and I think people just need to be able to use it to see the power of it um, and then they'll be able to know and then you know maybe move on to an enterprise account um, which we'll talk about in a second. So again, up to 10 simultaneous SRT and or RTMP ingest streams with basic. Ingest streams are replicated to HLS, RTMP and SRT automatically. If you need to turn them into other things, you have destinations so you can multicast to social platforms and custom destinations via RTMP and SRT so you can push destinations. And then the low latency custom layout grids for streams, remote monitoring from anywhere in the world and again that's really the benefit is you know getting your SRT ingested as close to you as possible and then you know utilizing the AWS edge servers like we do so that we get it out and anyone in the world can actually view the stream in ultra low latency so that's basic and now we're going to talk next about enterprise and some of the features of enterprise I'm gonna have the team move our streams over to our enterprise account <laughs> All right, so enterprise, virtual video control room. Now you open it up to like the really cool stuff, the stuff that we all love. Um, recording, uh, clip and post, and the production module, which allows you to do uh, NDI in the cloud with vMix. So really excited to show you some of these features. Um, one thing I do want to say is when you move from the basic to the enterprise plan, the big thing is you bring your own Ab Amazon Web Services account. Um, and what we do is we actually uh, tie VVCR to your account. And so that allows you to spin up clusters, spin up instances, really kind of go to town um, on records and really gives you full control of virtual video control room. Um, so much so that we actually have two virtual video control room accounts, uh, Enterprise, uh, the LiveX production for our internal uh, use and LiveX clients, which you have been utilizing for our clients for uh, almost a year now. So um, I asked the team to put our New Year's Eve feeds into our enterprise accounts. What you're looking at right now is our LiveX clients account. Um, uh, there's no proprietary data here, so uh, don't get too excited. Um, you'll see I've got clusters now. So the big thing is in basic, I had streams, destinations, and grids. Um, and enterprise adds clusters. So really cool feature, uh, the ability to add a cluster from your account. I can choose my, my uh, full size cluster. I can choose my name. It'll spin it up and get my instances going. So, you know, you have a production in South Africa next week, you spin up your clusters, you get it ready. Uh, by the way, one of our beta users uh, is in South Africa, South African company, and that, and that VVCR enterprise allows them to just stay in that region, the region they need to be in. So you can choose any region, whereas basic, we chose five regions for you, and we will more than likely add more as it gets more popular. Um, in this case with enterprise, you can choose your own region. So clusters does change. Uh, you'll see I've got streams. You'll see I've got a bunch of streams. We've got NDI input streams we'll talk about in a second. I've got my uh, helicopter stream, which I'm about to record. I've got my destinations. There's no destinations. I've got all my grids. And now I click on DVR. So DVR, I'm going to go ahead and add a new recording. And you'll see I've got a little drop down and I'm going to go ahead and do my NYE 6 helicopter because it's one of the coolest feeds that I have right now. I'm going to choose my East Coast, my primary, and I'm going to go ahead and push start. And you'll see what will happen is record started successfully will happen down there and you'll see record starting. So one of the things is the record is actually starting. Um, it does take about 15 seconds or so for it. You'll see um, the actual record starting. I always recommend that people start the record a little bit ahead of time than when they need it, which is you know typical on a hyperdeck or whatever you're using. So we'll just wait here for one second and uh, you know we'll see our status. We're still in record starting. Um, and then at some point in a couple seconds here, 
we will see the duration. There we go. So it's been recording now for five seconds. You see our status is recording. And um, I'm gonna let this record go because I'm gonna show you clip and post off of this record. Um, so I'm gonna let this record go for, let's say another 20 seconds, um, which is not the most exciting thing to watch. But uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is go, I'm gonna actually take this clip I'm going to trim it based on 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 where it is. So I'll let it go for, you know, another we'll let it go till like, let's say 50 seconds or so here, just so I can get enough of a clip to show you the true effect of uh, DVR. Now we have used utilized DVR for everything. Uh, one of the great things about replicating your streams in the cloud is that you can do this feature, you can record. So you don't have to decode everything and record it down. Uh, uh, once you have decoded it, you can actually record it in the cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording. It's about at 105. Uh, okay, I'm sure I wanna stop. It's gonna say record completing, record stop successfully down here, success. Uh, and then it is gonna take time for it to move to S3 containerized. So there you'll see, now I have it. So I can actually play it. Um, I can, so when I play it, it actually, uh, play DVR, I can see it, ooh, nice. Can I get those fireworks, ooh, sweet. Uh, and then I can also download the recording, so when I click download, it's gonna open up here. And then I can see the same clip, I can see it. And then right here, you can actually click download. And you'll see I got my NYE helicopter downloading uh, so that I can open it up for viewership later. Cool, all right, so next, we're gonna talk about clip and post. I'm gonna actually clip this, this helicopter feed. All right, so I'm gonna go into clip and post. I'm gonna create a new clip. I'm gonna call this helicopter good. I don't know why. Uh, my clip source is the one source that I had in DVR. So now that's gonna open up, you'll see. All right, I wanna start it like when the fireworks start. So I'm gonna actually like click here right before they start. There's the one. Okay, so I know it starts right around eight. Nope, right around eight, here's seven, eight. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set that trim point. That's my in. So I'm gonna write it eight and you'll see it's set. Now, the cool thing about VVCR that I love is that we do have one frame and one second. So that I'm gonna end it. I'm actually gonna play it. Do, 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 all right. And give me something. Oh, this is the countdown. This is so cool. Countdown. And you know what? Let's, here's the big boom. Let's stop it here for whatever reason, right? So now I've got my out. You'll see on my timeline, I've got this piece. Now I can go one frame. So literally, just because it's an H.264, we've actually, you know, created it so that you can do one second or one frame. Um, so you can see each frame going by so you can get this trim clip perfectly, right? So I'm going to wait till that heli- I'm going to actually wait till they don't really see any fireworks. All right, just for the sake of you guys not watching paint dry, I'm going to go ahead. Here you see my start time is 813. My end time is 3515. Again, I've named it Helicopter Good, right? I'm gonna push save on this. See, I've got some things happening on the top. I've saved it and it's completed successfully. So now we're gonna go ahead and play the clip. See, it starts right when the fireworks start. Man, I've got all my trims happening. So I'm good with that. So I can then download the clip. You see it downloading down here. And I've got my clip. I'm gonna open it up. And I've got my clip. So it's very helpful. Let me close that. So for those of you that are trimming, you know, when you're when you're having to have a stream go a little bit ahead and you want to get it tight and then get it onto YouTube or get it on LinkedIn or whatever platform doesn't have that or you just need to make a down and dirty trim, this is very, very useful to actually clip, clip the post and be able to download it and give it to uh, whoever needs it. All right, so next we're going to look at the production module, one of the most exciting features of Virtual Video Control Room. Um, and so uh, let's, let's get into it.
All right, so here we are, the moment you've all been waiting for, I know, I know, I know, production module in VVCR. So, so vMix in the cloud with the NDI in the cloud sources. Pretty amazing, one of my favorite features of virtual video control room. Um, for those of you that have tried to spin up vMix instances uh, in the cloud, uh, it's fairly easy, but it, it can be cumbersome uh, if you're trying to go really fast. So we've, we've made it very simple, if you go to our clusters here, you'll see I'm in back in my enterprise account um, and I've got LiveX clients and I'm in my clusters and you'll see I have a uh, transcoder uh, server. Uh, so this transcoder server allows me to turn SRT into NDI. So we make that available. If you want a demo of enterprise, uh, please go to the website, vvcr.tv, and you can actually sign up for a demo of Enterprise. Yours truly will probably be giving it to you. Um, and then we can talk about, you know, transcoding licenses and different instances and, and you know, all the costs of, of Enterprise and what uh, features are available. But again, I got my transcoding cluster. It's in the East Coast. That's good because I'm in the East Coast. And then over here, you'll see I've got my production module. And what we've done is, right now I've got a, a vMix in the cloud instance running. So I've got a Windows machine running with Parsec, everything ready to go. And right here, you'll see a little button, add vMix server. So I can name my server, I can choose my instance, uh, and it's basically set to spin up a Windows uh, instance in Amazon that's inside of the virtual private cloud. So the, guy, the, the team here set me up, so I don't need to do that. I've got an instance running. I'm gonna go back to my streams, and if you remember, I had my New Year's Eve stream. So I've got New Year's Eve one through five, and I need to, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to convert an SRT stream into NDI to make it available in vMix. So, I've got this helicopter feed, but you see here, I've got my NDI inputs. What I've done is I've created streams that tie to the transcoder instance. So I'm gonna take input six, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy the public IP and port number from input six. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to destinations. And you'll see here, I've got some destinations running uh, as NDI feeds. I'm gonna go ahead and add the helicopter feed. I'm gonna call it, uh, NYE6, helicopter, NDI, and then I'm gonna choose the helicopter feed, and then I'm going to, it's an SRT caller, I'm gonna paste, and you'll see VVCR automatically paste the IP and encoder port that I copied. So that's nice and easy for me. I'm in the East Coast cluster. I'm gonna go ahead and push save, and now you'll see I've got my NDI uh, helicopter feed in six, and I've got my input source. Okay, I should be good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Parsec. So I'm gonna go down here to Parsec. Let me just, yeah, Parsec, all right. Then I'm gonna to go to my VVCR demo. You see this machine. I'm gonna go ahead and open this machine. And then you'll see I've got vMix running. You see I've got my five sources. <laughs> I've got my guys running around. I got these guys, which are hilarious. I'm gonna go ahead and as those of you that know vMix, I'm gonna go down here uh, to the left, which is like under my, my pip right now. I'm gonna to go to add input. So um, I'm gonna to go to add an NDI desktop capture input, and you'll see right here, I've got NDI input six. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Sometimes the computer can take a little bit of processing because I added it, but you'll see I've got my helicopter feed sitting in there, all beautiful, um, ready to go, and I'm in vMix, and I'm running vMix in the cloud, you guys. It's really exciting, and we've actually done a bunch of productions this way. Um, so you can see how I have my monitoring tools, I have my record tools, I have my trim and post, my clip and post, and then I've got my vMix in the cloud. You, you, you virtually have everything that you currently use in your workflow right now, um, but remote and you can give feeds to people and you can make production. So um, it's very exciting um, that we're able to launch this, um, that it finally gets to go out in the world. And I'm really excited to have everybody out there that's watching this hopefully use VVCR and let us know. Um, and now I think we are going to get ready for the Q&A. All right, so virtual video control room. 
Been so excited to share this with everybody. Thank you everybody for joining us. I do wanna talk about some roadmap and things that we're doing for the future. So please, if you have a question about virtual video control room, we're gonna do that next. I'm gonna get in front here and ask the Q&A live. Um, uh, on our roadmap plan for enterprise, obviously live trimming, uh, love live trimming, a huge feature for us being able to push out to social very quickly as you're live. Um, live transcoding on destination, so you can see we already have the NDI transcoding done, but you know what I really wanna do is when you have an H.265 workflow, um, you know, being able to push to H.264 platforms so that you can really get the you know, the, the power of H.265 as far as, you know, better quality, lower uh, bandwidth, but still be able to push to platforms on destination. So that's coming in the next couple months. And then, you know, we're right, actually, we, we, we waited a little bit uh, for this launch, but we're right on the heels of some advanced telemetry. For those of you that have used Rivet Pro, our, our contribution software, you can tell how much telemetry we built into Rivet. And so we're gonna bring that in. So, you know, that stream data, just just the, the things you need when the client's like, why did, why did this happen? Why did this happen? And be able to say, oh, your internet was bad at this first mile or this last mile position. So those are just a few of the features that we're going to add to Virtual Video Control Room. Um, but again, thank you guys. Let me know your questions. I guess Walsh is gonna feed them to me. Um, what we got here, I'm gonna look at my first question. Are there more ingest health stats offered to the enterprise view to help engineers QC issues during transport? Dan Howes. Dan Howes, what's up, man? Thank you for joining us. Uh, one of the best encoding engineers on the West Coast. Hire the man. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, as I said, we're going to add uh, advanced telemetry features right around the corner uh, in both basic and enterprise. Enterprise will probably get them first. Typically, what we're going to do is we're going to push the features to our enterprise clients and then trickle down to the basic clients when it seems appropriate. But 100%, uh, again, if you look at our Rivet Pro, where we've really excelled with our SRT app, is the ability to have data and telemetry so you can QC engineering issues that you might have across the, the IP chain. Thanks, Dan. Uh, are there limitations to how many feeds you can do at once? So on basic plan, there are. You can do up to 10 feeds. Um, but on enterprise, there are not. So for DNC, we actually did over 200 streams. So the idea is, is that you can load balance with clusters in enterprise. So uh, typically what we'll do for uh, th approximately three instances, we'll do about 150 streams. Um, but what I'd try to prefer is I'll have instances set up in the different regions based on where the contribution layer is, uh, where the contribution feed is coming from. Um, but there, there are virtually no limitations, um, but it really depends on how many servers you spin up in, in AWS. Thank you for that. YouTube, Perry. The, hey, Perry, what's up, man? The 100 gig limit on basic, does that include push destination data? Yes, 100%. So as most of you might understand, most of, you know, AWS allows you to have uh, inbound, uh, no problem. Uh, it's when you're monitoring and you're pushing the destinations. Uh, so what we've done in basic is we've added a, uh, a limiting feature. So it doesn't limit you because we're all in production. We would never want to limit you. What it does is it's very similar to an overage calculator. You can always see where you're close to your limit and then um, and you can basically say, oh, I need to shut down. We'll, we'll give you a notification when you're close to your limit. Um, kind of like Zoom, very similar to the, to the Zoom process. What about latency with multicam live feeds? Michael, thank you. So, okay, so latency is, the, is, the, is my favorite word of ever. Um, so if you are sending, so, so in the case of the USGA point to point, so VVCR does not remove the stream sync data from high vision uh, stream sync. So if you're using stream sync, that means that on the back end, you're using Makito X decoders. The decoders are actually uh, determining via NTP 
how tight your, your frames are. So that's how we could get within one frame latency. So that does require hardware on both sides. What we have found with the NDI is that if you generate your sources into VVCR, you can get, there is no time matching feature as of yet. Um, the first thing we've launched is the ability for High Vision Stream Sync, which has been around for, for over three years. The ability of High Vision Stream Sync to work appropriately. And then the plan is actually in about three weeks, we're gonna come out with Rivet Time Syncing. Uh, and so that will allow you to have another SRT contribution for time sync. So uh, multicam uh, timing is something we're 100% working on. I've been working on it for over 30 months. It's something that's just always been in my brain of like the ability to add UGC with professional content when you can time feeds, but 100% coming. Um, in the future, I would say right now, you know, it, it kind of is different. If you're coming from the same destination, typically you're on time. Uh, meaning like if there's six feeds coming from the same destination, you're going to be on time. Um, if you're coming from different uh, destination uh, uh, contribution areas, uh, time is definitely, the latency is not going to match up unless you use a product like StreamSync. Any opportunities to link to social media platforms we're posting directly from VVCR? Corey Manichi, Corey, what's up, man? Uh, yes, one million thousand percent. We saw this right away. Um, the destinations thing we originally built because of the NDI transcoding because I really wanted vMix in the cloud. We all did. And that was kind of what we were looking to do. Um, but a hundred percent. So right uh, on the back of this release, we'll have a, another release for social media platforms. So it'll give it a little bit, much more platforms and, and you'll be able to link the platform so that you don't have to know the RTMP uh, stream name and key. Yep. That's a great question, by the way. Um, one more question I'm told in my ear, but I'm just gonna wait for the, uh, thank you again for joining us on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and YouTube. Really appreciate the support. Uh, figured we'd have like 10 viewers. We've already had more than that, and I already see some familiar names on there. It's really awesome. Um, we have a great community of producers, uh, not just at LiveX, but all around, and uh, and you guys really help. I, I've been really, you know, Dan, some people out there uh, messaging me being like, I'm excited for the launch. Uh, it really makes it, uh, makes this all worth it. And I, I'm really excited. I'm more excited that LiveX can make tools for us, um, for all of us, uh, and not just, you know, keep them uh, at LiveX. So Walsh, do we have one more question? Last question, do you need to use Parsec? Can you use a different software? So 100% yes. Originally, this, so this is in regards to production module and vMix in the cloud. So we, we decided to go with Parsec um, because of the team computer uh, aspect where you can share team computers with other people. Teradici works. Uh, so we have an implementation where you can also utilize Teradici. I know there's many, many operators that would prefer to use Teradici. 100%, we got you covered. Um, basically, Teradici Paradici and Parsec are, are, are both uh, supported. Awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Um, please contact us if you'd like an enterprise plan. You can right now sign up for BASIC at vvcr.tv. Uh, you can do a free trial. Let me know what you think. Let us know. Contact at livex.tv. Um, and let us know what we need to be doing to make this tool more useful for you. Thank you, and have a great week.